a few more examples of looking at these rational inequalities and solving them. We have x over x plus 4 less than or equal to 0. First thing we're going to do is find the critical values because it's already set less than or equal to 0. And so one of the critical values is immediately x equals 0. The other one from the denominator is going to be x plus 4 equals 0 or x equals negative 4. So those are our two boundary values. Any boundary value that's found from the denominator, remember, that is not part of the solution set of our solution set. And that's just because it makes the denominator 0, which we can't have. All right. Now, even though this is greater than or equal, we can't include the negative 4. OK, so on our number line, when we construct this, we have a negative 4 and we have our 0. We're going to have an open circle at negative 4, but we're going to have a closed circle at 0. All right. And so that's going to be where we can go through and try to find our intervals at this point. So our intervals are from negative infinity to negative 4 exclusive, from negative 4 to 0 inclusive of, of 0, but exclusive of negative 4, and then from 0 to infinity. Okay. inclusive of zero. Now we're going to make our table just like we've done before. All right. And so we have our interval negative infinity to negative four. And then we have from negative four to zero, inclusive of zero, exclusive of four, and then from zero to infinity, inclusive of zero. Okay. Then we have our test values. Um, test value one, negative five. Test value two, negative one, test value three, positive one. We're going to plug it back into x over x plus four. And by it, I mean the test value greater than zero. So let's try negative five greater than or equal to zero, sorry. Um, and let's try negative five first, right? So negative five over negative five plus four. That's going to give us a negative five over negative one, which is going to be positive five. And that certainly is greater than or equal to zero, OK? so. The good news is, is that this interval is in, OK? So let's try negative 1. So negative 1 over negative 1 plus 4, that's going to become negative 1 third. That is clearly not greater than or equal to 0, OK? So this one's out. And then finally, just plugging 1 in, this one seems like it's going to work. 1 over 1 plus 4 is 1 fifth, which is certainly greater than or equal to 0. And so we have two parts that are going to be parts of the solution set, or two intervals. So our two intervals are going to be from negative infinity to negative 4 union inclusive 0 to infinity. All right. And so we're going to say x is an element of that. All right. Now, let's verify this by looking at the graph of the function. OK. And then we'll also graph um, the, the, the places where we have these separator boundary values. OK, so we have y equals x over x plus 4. And remember our two values, band boundaries. We have x equal negative 4 and x equals 0. And so if we look at this, notice that any time we have a value less than negative 4, that this is above the x-axis. OK, so remember y equals 0. OK, so we want to make sure that the value is above this blue line right here. Everything is below from 0 to negative 4. And then everything is above from 0 to infinity, which is precisely what we wanted. OK, so you remember that our solution set was from negative infinity to negative 4 from 0 to infinity. So that makes sense. Now, what if we, for some reason, we have the inequality and it's not equal to 0? OK, so every other problem we've seen so far with respect to rational functions has been greater than or less than or whatever equal to 0. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start this problem by subtracting 3 from both sides. And then we're just going to add the fractions together. So this is going to be x plus 2. And so this now becomes x minus 1 over x plus 2. Think of 3 as 3 over 1. And then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the least common denominator, which in this case is going to be x plus 2. And that's still greater than or equal to 0. Now we can merge this into one fraction. So this becomes x minus 1. We take the 3 and distribute, not forgetting there's a negative there. So we're going to have minus 3x 
minus six, okay? And then divide by x plus two, because that is our common denominator. Finally, we combine like terms, and so we get a negative two x minus seven divided by x plus two, greater than or equal to zero. And so now we make the problem look like all the other problems that we've seen so far, okay? We just had to do a little bit of algebra to get there. Setting the numerator equal to zero, we get negative two x minus seven equals zero. We add seven to both sides. We divide by negative two, so x is negative seven halves. Adding two to both sides, x equals negative two is the other boundary value. We can't forget that because x plus two produces a solution of negative two or a boundary value of negative two in the denominator, this is not part of our solution set. All right, and we go back up here and remember that it's greater than or equal to, okay? So when we fill these in, this is gonna be a solid dot at seven ha negative seven halves, but this is gonna be an open circle because it's not part of the solution set, okay? Now remember, if it's just less than or greater than, then it's always gonna be open circle, right? So we have negative seven halves, which is negative 3.5. We have negative two. And so our boundaries, closed circle here, open circle here. And so negative infinity, to negative seven halves, inclusive of seven halves, negative, and then inclusive negative seven halves, comma, infinity, and then finally two to infinity, right? Um, and by the way, this should be negative seven halves to two, negative two, not two infinity, excuse me, the negative two. All right, so now, and this should be a negative two as well, sorry about that. And finally, let's go ahead and do our table so we have our intervals, all right? So from negative infinity to negative seven halves, inclusive, and then from negative seven halves to negative two, exclusive of negative two, inclusive of seven halves, and then finally from negative two to infinity. All right, now let's go ahead and substitute these test values. Um, the test values that we should that we might use, okay, and you can pick whatever numbers you want. Remember that negative seven halves is the same as negative 3.5, all right? So um, for our first test value, let's use negative four. For the second test value, let's use negative three, and then just let's just use zero for the last one, okay? We're gonna plug in, and it doesn't matter really if we plugged into the original inequality, Okay, or if we plug into this inequality, which is actually what I'm going to do. I'm just going to plug in here because it's a little bit easier to work with the zero. So negative 2x minus 7 divided by x plus 2 greater than or equal to zero. Right. And so now. We substitute negative 4 back in. Okay, and that makes it pretty easy. So we have negative two times negative four minus seven divided by negative four plus two. Um, that's gonna be eight minus seven, which is gonna be one divided by negative two, all right? Or negative one half greater than or equal to zero. Clearly that's not true. And so this is L. Okay, so this one not part of the solution set. Over here, negative seven halves comma negative two. Let's plug negative three back in. So we have negative two times negative three minus seven divided by negative three plus two. The numerator six minus seven is negative one. Denominator negative three plus two is negative one. So we get one and certainly one is greater than zero. So this is in and then substituting zero is probably the easiest. Two times zero minus seven. And then we have zero plus two, all right? That's gonna be negative seven over two, which is clearly not greater than or equal to zero. So the only solution to this is gonna be from negative seven halves to negative two, all right? Inclusive of seven halves, exclusive of two. Now to check this, what we should do is we should just go ahead and plot and let's plot the original to see 
when x minus 1, x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 3. And we're hoping that it's be between these two intervals. Okay, so we're just going to plot those. So we had x minus 1 and x plus 2. All right, and that was the original, remember? Okay, and the critical values that we got were negative 7 halves and negative 2. All right, so let's plot negative 7 over 2, and then let's plot x equal negative 2. All right. And remember, we're not looking for y greater than 0. We're looking for y greater than 3. Okay, so if we go back, remember, the original inequality was greater than or equal to 3. Okay, so we go over here, and we notice right here that between this boundary, it looks like it's always going to be greater. Okay, if I keep zooming out, it's always going to be above this blue line. Everything else is below the blue line, which is precisely what we want. All right. So that's how we can check to make sure that this is valid, even when we don't necessarily have it e um, greater than, equal to zero, or less than zero, or whatever it might be. We can still kind of box it in and put it within those constraints. So those are our rational inequalities. And so this concludes our section with both polynomial and rational inequalities. Um, and this will actually be the last thing that we look at in this section with respect to algebraic functions. Um, when we move on, we're going to move away from these sorts of functions. And we're going to start taking a look in the next chapter at exponential logarithmic types of functions.